OTA, nigga. Frankie, real deal, like holy feel. Know the deal when I'm in the field. Need a couple mil, know my deal. And this flow is ill. You gon' fucking steal. Know it's real. I just need a pill. Pop a Tora doll, just a feel. YouTube. Today I have a very special guest. You see him on WWE, and he's also a rapper, a football player. He's been on A and E, ESPN, Fox. Jesus Christ, you do everything, dude. It's uh, formerly known as Top Dollar, AJ Francis. What's up, yo? Hey, what's up, man? Appreciate you having me, dog. Yeah, I've done a lot of things, but I got more to do. You feel what I'm talking about? Of course, of course. And like, I've learned, like looking up information about you, man. Like I knew that you went to Maryland. I know you played on multiple NFL teams, but you went to Gonzaga High School in Washington, D.C. And yep. I I went, I went to the rival high school of that in Hyattsville, Maryland, uh, the math. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of awkward. We kind of accidentally got beef on site. Hey, <laughs> on site. And the crazy thing was, I actually, people don't know this, but I, uh, the last two te uh, schools I picked between were Gonzaga and the math. Uh, and the real, the reason I picked to Gonzaga, well, I like Gonzaga better as a school, honestly, but like one of the big reasons was because, uh, I had a direct line of transportation to, uh, <laughs> to their Damatha, I did not have to get a ride like in a car, right. but you know, Gonzaga, I could take the train. And as soon as, soon as I could take the train, I'm on, you know what I'm saying? Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, the Metro's right over by them too. Like I know one story real quick. Uh, they brought us into uh, Gonzaga just to have like a little peace gathering, right? And then right as we're about to leave the school, they walk us through the hallway that shows every time they beat Damatha and anything possible. I'm like, <laughs> Y'all did this on that's purpose. Y'all did this on like purpose. something they would do. Them boys crazy, man. When I was there, like, I mean, legally, I'm not allowed to say what you know what I'm saying. But when I was there, I'll just say that them boys, I did, I, I didn't do nothing. I wasn't there. I don't know who was there, but I know some things happened. Let's just say they was doing some crazy <laughs> things. I would definitely do. Uh, I want to talk about just like everything that's been going on in your life so far. I mean, you've had an insane life so far, dude. Uh, you dropped an EP a few months ago called First Class. What's it like yeah. being a rapper, a wrestler, a football player, a TV host, etc.? How's it being AJ Francis? I mean, I just never limit myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't ever let nobody else tell me what I can and can't do. Um, I was... In the NFL, like I've rapped since I was 12 years old. I've been playing, I played football at 12, so I started both the same year. Yeah. But I stopped rapping like my junior, my sophomore, junior year in college. Um, not that I, I just stopped recording. I always yeah. was writing, yeah. but I just stopped recording. I stopped releasing projects. I stopped going to performing at shows. I just got away from it for a few years. And during that time is when I got to the NFL. And, you know, I was like, four years into the NFL and I was like, you know, you, most NFL careers are two and a half years, um, you know, and I was undrafted. So most undrafted players don't even play a year. Um, so like I'm four years into my career and I'm like, man, what haven't I done? Like, like I, I'm, I'm so blessed. Uh, I, I have been given this opportunity to play in the NFL and, you know, a lot of people get to the NFL and they spend their money on cars and, and jewelry, and nights out. I traveled the world. Like, so, like, from age 23 when I got to the NFL to age 29, uh, right before the pandemic happened, uh, I been, went to, like, 23 countries in that time spread. So, like... Now I was like, man, what, what haven't I done? What have I always wanted to do? And in the back of my mind, I was like, man, I want to make music. Like I had, I had, I had been made music in a while, and I got a lot to say. Um, so like, I took that opportunity and was like, you know what? On my off days and in the off season, I'm gonna just record music, and I'll drop an album, and it'll be my album. And if nobody listens to it, I don't care. You know, I made it for me. I did it for me. And so I did it. It's called OTA. I dropped it in 2017 and it got over 2 million streams and views and listens. So it's like, I was like, hold up, wait a minute. Now I got a fan base. And not only do I have a fan base, but I'm like more excited because I didn't expect this to happen. Like I didn't expect anyone to actually care 
about my music. And sorry, my dog is playing with his bone. He about to get good. <laughs> nah, but uh, <laughs> I, uh, I I didn't expect nobody to care about my music. So like when uh, he did, when they did, and now I was like booking shows, going on tour, and I got to go on tour performing my music around the country. And then I was like, oh my god! Then I got to do a show in uh, in Rome, and I shot a music video. And I shot a music video in Europe, and the song's called European. So it was like, it was like I couldn't believe this was happening, right? So then my NFL career still going on, and then right when my NFL career ends, right before I know I'm about to sign with WWE, I'm like, you know what? I'm a free agent. I'm gonna drop a second album called Free Agent, mm -hmm. and I did, and it got the same response as the first album, and I was able to go on tour for that too, and like, it was crazy. And then I got to WWE. And I was recording because my character was obviously a rapper, so I was recording all the time anyway. And um, so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do uh, like an album while I was uh, shooting A&E's Most Wanted Treasures. So while I was shooting that show, I was going around the country recording uh, in different studios. Like I recorded uh, this, the last song on the album called Scent Sign. I, I bought that beat and wrote the song in, Knoxville, Tennessee, in an old studio that Dolly Parton used to use because I was filming with uh, uh, I was filming with uh, Mayor Glenn Jacobs and The Undertaker for the show. So like, so like, and on one of the off days filming, I went in the studio. So like, everything else that I recorded was at my house. So yeah. it's like the opportunities for music since I dropped my first album have just been so much of a blessing that like, it's getting to the point now it's like, well, I think my next album will probably be my last album. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Give the folks four and call it a day. You know what I'm saying? Oh my God, my God. Dude, like you're such a, you're such a big fan of pro wrestling and on top of everything that you do, uh, watching you on like A&E Most Wanted, like, it seemed like you really know wrestling, like like you really yeah. were a fan growing up. Where did the love of wrestling come from? Um, I do really know wrestling because I, I've watched wrestling my entire life. Um, like going back to, you know, Big Boss Man, Ultimate Warrior, Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, Randy Savage, Ted DiBiase, that era when I was like an infant, I was watching wrestling. Then as a little kid, I was watching Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. And then, you know, as you know, when I got a little older than that, that's when I really fell in love with wrestling and wrestling became a big part of my life because of the likes of The Rock. The Rock looked like me. He was like something different than everybody else. He was funny. He was charismatic. I was like, yo, I love this dude. Like, I love him. And then not to mention the other guy you may have heard of him. His name's Stone Cold Steve Austin. Is probably the biggest star in the history, in, in within wrestling, the biggest star in the business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, the two of them on TV every week, <laughs> every week. Like, I was hooked like, for years. You know what I'm saying? So then, you know, and then I grew up and matured more. And then I, at that point, I understood the actual art form and not just the characters. You know what I'm saying? And once I took an appreciation for the art form of the matches, of storytelling, of those things, I was, from that point forward, I was I was hooked. And I took some I took some time away, probably my junior year, my no my sophomore year in high school until my sophomore year in college, because my schedule I was all the practices and stuff and weightlifting trainings I had to go to, which ended up working out obviously, but um, like all those I had to go to, I was missing shows and I couldn't watch the shows. So I was like, man, I'm just, I'm just not part of my life right now. But then, you know, when I got back in college, I had more times on those nights and I still got back into it. And then once I got to the NFL, the moment I got to the NFL, I knew I was going to go to the WWE. I knew it. The moment so, I got to the NFL, I knew. You in the NFL, go. you wanted to be in the WWE. Like, what was the reaction yeah. when saying like, yeah, I know I'm in the NFL, which is like this giant organization, but I think I want to yeah. go, I'm going to go wrestle for Vince. Like what yeah, was the reaction to that? Obvious, obviously, the plan is to stay in the NFL forever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, nobody ever accomplishes that plan. So uh, I knew, but you know, 
I was undrafted. So I didn't expect my career to be as long as it actually was. Honestly, I know how the business works. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so when I end up having a longer career, um, I knew it was for certain that I was going to WWE. Like there wouldn't be anything stopping me from doing it. Um, but as soon as I got to, to the NFL, cause I know how WWE is like anybody who has a modicum of professional sports, anything they yeah. gonna mention <laughs> they they bring it up oh, like yeah. because i can tell you also there's been a lot of guys that are on that roster right now that played in the nfl but they never actually played in a game you see what i'm saying so the list of people who've actually played in the nfl is not very long so because i actually was playing i was like oh as soon as i'm done with this i know i'm going to wwe and that's exactly what i did <laughs> Definitely. And like one of those teams that you played for throughout your time was the Washington football team. I know right now they're under like a whole name change right now. So if you had the yeah. opportunity to change the name of for the former Redskins, now Washington football team, to whatever you want, because I know right now some of the big names coming out right now are the presidents, uh, Red Tails, uh, Red Wings, I think was one of them. I'm pretty sure that's NFL team. I wish right. the Red Wings, I wish they would have picked Red Wings. Yeah. I think they're going to pick Commanders. Um, I heard that I one. I think that's the new, the new, the new line is that they're going to be the Commanders. Um, because I like the jerseys I saw with them, like the little, the little, they said the leak jumps. I saw, yeah, I like the little them. stars on them. Yeah, them jerseys are hard. I can't oh, even yeah. fake. They was hard with the little shiny gold face mask. Can't Big even guy. fake. They was hard. But at the same time, like, uh, uh, like, honestly, I wish it would have been the Red Tails. I think it would have been a great way to flip the narrative completely, um, to go from, uh, this is something we don't need to be representing ourselves as, as because it's culturally insensitive to these are cultural icons and heroes to a lot of people oh, yeah. in the area that you live in. Because, you know, PG County, DC, it's a lot of brothers out there that would have, and there's a lot of brothers out there that are fans of the Washington football team. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> I think that would have been a good fit, but you know, I personally think of all the names that I've seen that if they're not going to be the Red Tails, the best name was the Washington football team. I think that was cool because it made me feel like, because I'm a big soccer fan. I watch soccer uh, from all over the country. I love it. And I'm a season ticket holder. I live in Orlando and I'm a season ticket holder at Orlando City. I go to all the games. So like I love soccer. And I thought it was cool because it was kind of like an American version of how Europeans name their soccer teams. Like the Washington, like if they were a soccer team, maybe the Washington football club, but they're a football team. So they're the Washington football team. Like I thought that was cool, but you know, after two years, I guess they don't agree. <laughs> and uh, also looking at your career right now so far, I mean, you played in the NFL and I know you're a big fan of the Rock, XFL, mm -hmm. 2023. Is that something that you would actually want to be a part of? I mean, let me say this. Do I think that I could play in the XFL and dominate the XFL? Absolutely. Go watch the tape. My last game in the NFL, I had six tackles as a nose guard. I would like to know the list of nose guards that have had six tackles in a game since I got out the NFL. I guarantee you it's not long, right? So let me just talk the fa actual factuals of the situation. Um, but I'm also, I'm 31 years old. Football is a young man's game. You see what I'm talking about? So like, could I do it? Yeah, but do I want to go back to what my body felt like when I was playing in the NFL? Not really. No, not that. Not that. Not that I've. Now that I've not felt like that for three years. Like, yeah, yeah no, nah, I feel pretty good now. Like, I, I, I don't want to go back to waking up having to soak my legs and back every morning just to get loose. I don't, I'm not. I'm, I'm off that now. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause even when I was, people ask, "Well, well, you were in wrestling. Like, you get hurt doing that. You got to realize, like." This is gonna shock a lot of people, but wrestling ain't real. So like, it is. So like, it's not a like. Yeah, you take bumps, and yeah, you do hurt, and the matches do hurt. But like, compared to forty plays against a three hundred pound man who's trying to kill me every play, as I'm trying to kill him, it's not the same. It's not even close to the same. You know what I'm saying? It's different levels of <laughs> body movement, ache and pain, right? And also at the same time, like in wrestling, I'm huge. 
I'm not. I'm actually six five, three fifty. That's not a build height and weight. That's how what I actually am. So like, <laughs> so like to in wrestling, a lot of guys are not that. So if I have most people I have matches with are smaller than me, and in wrestling, the story is if I'm if I'm bigger than you, the whole match is me throwing you around, and then you get me once, maybe twice at the end, and it's over. Like that's wrestling. So that's the story of professional wrestling forever. <laughs> so like, <laughs> like it's it was easier for me than it is for a lot in wrestling than it is for a lot of guys in the industry because a lot of guys are not my size, so they got to take fifteen bumps in a match. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was lucky enough that in my entire look at my uh, my entire WWE run, actual back bumps that I took that like someone gave me and it wasn't me doing my elbow drop move. Like actual back bumps I took, I took one the entire time that I was on camera in the WWE. I took one. It was a drop kick from Santos Escobar off the top rope where I controlled my whole way down. Like that was the one bump that I took that I didn't give myself. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it was easy for me. Not everybody's not that lucky because not everybody is the same size. Well, yeah, of course you're six, five and 350. That's absolutely <laughs> Like you're like the size of a building, dude. But, <laughs> um, there was like a, a rumor going around that there was a, a, a performance center class that the Undertaker was hosting, and it was like teaching like big guys how to wrestle. Were you part of that class? Yeah, I was part of that class. And if you watch the 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 Last Dance uh, uh, documentary, I'm mean, not Last Dance, uh, Last Ride documentary, Last yeah. Dance to Jordan, I took that person. Yeah. Um, and uh, the Last Ride documentary, uh, I'm in it in that class. Um. Uh, and it was cool. It was a bunch of all the big guys. And to be honest with you, I wasn't even supposed to be in that class. Um, that was my first week when I got to the PC. And they were like, yeah, uh, your teacher's not here yet. So just hop in somebody else's class. And I was like, all right, cool. So, Let's go sit down uh, uh, but, then, but then I saw Undertaker had a class. And I was like, well, know what class I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, I went out there. And the best thing to me was that... Uh, I actually got to work with him in it. Like I got to, like you don't see that in the in the documentary. It's, um, you know, me and Baba Tunde, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, Commander Aziz. Uh, <laughs> uh, we us working in that class, um, in the documentary. But in in the actual class, I got to like work with Taker and like sell for him, and and he gave me his his patented corner punches. And, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a really cool day to be able to get in the ring and just do some stuff with The Undertaker as your first day at WWE. Um, you know, doesn't get much better than that, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it doesn't. And, like, you also were on, like, an A&E show with him as well. And, like, not just Undertaker, but, like, Jerry Lawler and Kane and Booker T. What kind of, like, advice did you get from these legends, like, maybe off camera about, like, your training and being a pro wrestler? Oh man, I got so much advice from them. I, I mean, I literally was, I was a sponge from them the whole time. And that's why the crazy thing is like, people forget that like, just like I got, I just like I had six tackles in my last game in the NFL and then I was no longer in the NFL. Well, when I got released from WWE, all the WWE legends that I know reached out to me and was like, yo, I don't know what's going on. You'll be back, da 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 da. You'll, you'll get opportunities, da da da. Like, these are guys that are in the Hall of Fame. These are guys that, know what it takes to do the business and they know that I have what it takes and they know that because they spent days with me just kicking it not even just like some we film and, and then we leave like afterwards we would go out to eat we would go hang out we would go do a bunch of different things and like I kicked it with Booker T all the time you know what I'm saying like whenever we were in the same city like Wow. Even going, even going to like now, I'm in Mark Henry's fantasy football league, uh, league. You know what I'm saying? Like the connections that I made on the show are like not just this is in wrestling. It's like we are cool. So it's like to be able to have that relationship with so many legends that I grew up idolizing is the coolest part to me because like everybody loved the show that's cool and I look great in the show that's cool but the people in the show that the show was based around have respect for me and everything that I do that's cool to me like that's to everyone else they see all the other stuff I, that is cool to me so that's what I like most about it 
Uh, yeah, totally. I don't see why that would be your most favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, being on like NXT and SmackDown, was there a, a strong direction from your time going from NXT 2.0 to SmackDown? Like, here's like the layout of what Hit Row might be doing, or was it kind of just like here you're on? No, nah, we just got we honestly we just got drafted, and then yeah. whenever you whenever you are on uh, really any wrestling show, not just WWE, even in like the Indies. You don't really ever know what you're doing until you get there. I mean, yeah, like, I'm sure Roman Reigns knows what he's doing because he's Roman Reigns and he's one of the GOATs, you know what I'm saying? So I'm sure that he has a lot more uh, say in what he's doing week in and week out. Yeah. Um, but, like, you just getting drafted? Like, we we had no idea what we were doing. Like, we were hope. And we got a lot of cool stuff to do. And like the segment we did with Sammy was a hit and everybody loved it. Our opening intro promo that we did where uh, we wrestled uh, the two enhancement talent in Kansas, like that was cool. Like that was really cool. Like we, that's a, that's a reason, that's a real reason why like none of us are really upset or tripping at our release because we know that every minute that we were on television, whether it be SmackDown or NXT, we got the most out of it and we made people give a damn about us. Like, oh, yeah. it's like we did our part. So like, we're not sad that we didn't get to do anything else that we wanted to do because we know we did everything that we were supposed to do and it didn't work out how we wanted it to, but that's life. Totally. And like, you guys got to make like your, I guess like your dark debut on in Baltimore. I was actually there for the show. I yeah. was in the crowd going absolutely crazy. Um, what yeah. was it like debuting like in Maryland? That was crazy because my whole family was there. Um, they grew up my whole life watching me be a wrestling fanatic, yeah. having me seeing me have The Rock on my birthday cake, seeing me wear you know uh, the Godfather T-shirts that say "Ho Train" to school and getting in trouble. Like, <laughs> like they seen that my whole life. So. For them to get the opportunity to not only see us debut but get drafted in my hometown, like it was, it was like written in the stars. It was a, I mean, I really couldn't have asked for anything better. And to, you know, to go from that and even like now, like even after we got released, like, yeah, we're salty that we got released, but at the end of the day, like we, feel great about what we did like we wouldn't do anything different and i don't think anyone would want us to so it's like all right well that was fun <laughs> and the future is definitely really big for all you guys um yeah. is there a, is there a will we see not necessarily hit row but i know you used to go by a group in on the indies as the row actually formed together on independence and what what's next in your future that you actually really want to uh walk through maybe a possible forbidden door um honestly i'm getting back into tv man like um i've done a lot of television before i got to wwe um on all the major networks abc cbs nbc um so like i've done a lot of television already and now i have even more pedigree on television and i hosted a tv show and uh, and it went well and it was a hit. So it's like, I got a lot of opportunities on television that I'm looking forward to getting into as well as um, like, as far as professional wrestling goes, I mean, a wise man once said, if, if you're good at something, never do it for free. So <laughs> like, if you want to see me recreate everything that I've already created, and do it again for a third time. I mean, I'm not that hard to find, homeboy. Everybody know where to find me, you know what I'm saying? So like, I I'm very much ready for the next step. I don't have any idea where it'll be, but at the same time, uh, in professional wrestling that is, but at the same time, that's a good thing because if I limit myself before I even see what my options are, then I ain't heard nobody but me. So I like to protect me. So that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I respect that. And uh, I guess to almost ask like a follow-up to that, is there in the professional wrestling world at least, is there a certain match that you want to see? Maybe it doesn't have to be like under contract, but is there a certain guy that you want 
to step in the ring with if you do step back in to that pro wrestling ring? Um, I will step back in pro wrestling. That's not the question. Okay. That that you can that that I'm not going nowhere in pro wrestling. Am I going to be in the ring three days a week for doing shows all over the place? No, I'm not. Um, um that's not that's not my style. But no. like am I going to be around doing matches with people that I want to face? Absolutely. Now, um, as far as somebody that I I would like to see, um, hmm. you know, I made a whole list of guys that I would like to see. But to be honest with you, if I had to pick one person that I want to have a match with somewhere, don't really care where, it's Swerve. <laughs> I think me and Swerve can do some real cool shit. And I think that we have proven for a very long time that we are capable of creating a buzz. And um, I think we could do it again. Holy man. And before we wrap this, just go ahead and wrap it all up. Um, my last thing I saw that was really interesting about you, it had to do with football and during your time in football. You you play for Miami, but you're also driving as an Uber driver. Yeah. What was the craziest experience of being an Uber driver while also playing in the NFL? Um, so I the, the the full story of that is I was after my it was after my second year in the NFL. And yeah, I made good money my first two years in the NFL, but I also was dead broke before I got to the NFL. So, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but when you're in the NFL, you only get paid during the season. You know, so like when, you, and yeah, you might make 300 grand, 400 grand, 500 grand, however much it is um, during the season. But then you got to budget your money out for the next seven months, right? So like, so like you can either just spend all the money that you just made or you could get some more money doing something else. So I was never scared to work for nothing as I've proven my whole life. And so it was my second year in the NFL and this Uber was just getting hot. And this was back when like I was making, I could make, I could make like 50, 60 bucks in an hour. You know what I'm saying? So like in Miami at the time. So like, and that's without surge pricing. You know what I'm saying? So, so if I can make fifty, sixty dollars in an hour, and I work four hours, and I make two hundred dollars, well, that's my spending money this weekend when I go out and do so. And I'm not spending money that I earned during the season. Like that's still accruing interest and being able to be used in other investments, right? So like it's called work ethic and having a game plan. But people see it as like, oh, he he, he did it. He did it because he's broke. Like no, bro. Like y'all. Y'all ain't never ever hustled a day in your life, so you don't know what it looks like, right? So, it, it, I, I I did it, but the thing was, when I I was doing it, I, I announced that I was doing it on Twitter, and it went viral, and I didn't expect that. Like nobody ever expects to go viral, right? So much so that uh, Jimmy Fallon made a joke about. Uh, well, my offense coordinator hated it because the joke uh, was on the Tonight Show, and uh, Jimmy Fallon said. Uh, and I don't know if you heard this, but uh, Miami Dolphins AJ Francis has uh, become the Uber driver. In the Uber driver, and uh, he said, which is funny because it's the first time all year that the Dolphins have drove for more than ten yards, right? <laughs> but look, so, so so, but I play defense, so I don't give a damn that he made fun of the offense. You know what I'm saying? I don't care. But the offensive coordinator was. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's cool. yeah, but it, it went viral so then like I started I actually have a, a there's some episodes on my YouTube channel if you want to check them out called Have Drive where I interview people that I'm driving around um, and like every major network has bit that since you got Carpool Karaoke you got every major network has bit that since but go ahead and check the dates to see who the first person really interviewing people was in the car go ahead and check that out um, mm -hmm. but like uh uh it was fun because like I got to interview like famous people too. Like I got to interview like Billy Corbin, who was the director of Cocaine Cowboys, which is a huge it was huge before they did the Netflix release, you know what I'm saying? So like 
Uh, I got to do, and he did Broke, and he did um, The U, and The U Part 2, like, so he's like, I got to interview him. That was cool as shit to me. I was like, yo, well, this, I got to interview, and I am now we're, we became friends uh, after that. So, like, it was, because everybody remembers it, just the fact that I was an Uber driver in the NFL, but it's so much a funnier story than that because of actually what came from it. Totally, man. And as we wrap it up, uh, where can people find you on social media and what do you have coming up next in the life of AJ Francis? Uh, you can find me on all social media at AJ Francis 410. Um, I intentionally have that on all platforms. So whatever platform you use, if I'm on it, it's AJ Francis 410. Um, and at the same exact time, uh, you know, look for me to make some news, man. I got some... Uh, I got a lot of things that I've been working on behind the scenes for uh, like a year now that people didn't know about because it just didn't have to do with WWE. Yeah. And now is the perfect opportunity for some of these things to come forward. Not to mention, I just shot the coolest music video of my life with Swerve um, in uh on monday and he'll we'll be releasing the video and the and the song for it probably in march i would have to think maybe even sooner um but it's it's the coolest concept video it's like a reservoir dogs uh shoot 'em up bang bang uh you know what i'm saying like comic book with like funny jokes in there to like uh you know <laughs> to like make it like a like Reservoir Dogs and make it like one of those movies. Um, so, and it's like just a regular, and it's just a music video too. So we got a lot of cool visuals in there. Um, and Swerve actually released the, uh, like one of the clips today uh, on his social media of him like driving, s driving, sitting out top of the car like, uh, like the Joker. So it's like a really cool shot that we got. Um, he was like, I want to get this shot. I was like, that's no problem. We could do that because it was like I directed the video, and um, you know we had uh, a lot of we had a lot of guys there helping um, that also directed and 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 helped produce it. And it's going to look crazy. It's going to look unlike any music video you've ever seen from any, either one of us, but also from anybody in professional wrestling for sure. Awesome, awesome. I'm sure the future's gonna be really bright for you, uh, AJ. Uh, thank you for coming on the channel. I really do appreciate it. I've been a big fan of yours ever since I found out about you guys who won in the NFL, but also in uh, WWE. So I really appreciate you coming on. Uh, guys, make sure to like, comment, share, and always subscribe, and we're out. We going up like a thousand. I'm a flesh just like a muscle man Malcolm. Uh, we going up like a thousand. I'm a flesh just like a muscle man Malcolm. Uh, when did you like one, two, three? If you like the channel, this will squeeze. If you like the channel, this will squeeze. If you like the channel, this will squeeze.